Monday morning in Manhattan. The city was picking up where it left off on Friday. I was trying to remember back that far. Another day in the promised land and the pot of gold was still at the end of the rainbow. Now all I had to do was find the rainbow. But happily, this was America, the land of opportunity. Strami? Is there anything else I can get for you, Mr. Hammer? Maybe later. Belda, you want a pastrami? Any idea where I'd put it? You got a point. Sorry, no sale. That's okay. I usually do better with the men anyway. Bye. Bye-bye. Smart girl. Yeah. You got to admire her business acumen, too. <laughs> I thought you were going to quit smoking. It's a dying art. Well, well, look who's here. Hey, Michael. Hey, Malcolm. How are you doing, buddy? Well, uh, Malcolm Dobbs. Country and Western's answer to Legionnaire's disease. Oh, Mama, darling baby, how are you, pretty? A brand new album for you. Oh, yeah. Come here. Excuse me. What can I do for you? I got myself in the biggest poker game in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Sprague building? Mm hmm. It's a 50K buy-in. I might be the favorite. Need a little backup. What do you mean, protection? Mm-hmm. Malcolm, come on. The scientist, private investigator. You know that. I'm not in that racket. What do you mean? For 5C, you don't want to babysit me, sit around and watch a good poker game? Don't miss lunch, Malcolm. It starts in three hours. I have a feeling the down payment for the computer I wanted just walked out the door. Felda, I don't like computers. Mike, a computer could bring some order to this office, into your life. I can't think of a better reason for not having one. Buy yourself a co-op, that partner. Angela, you've done all you can. Pat. I'll talk to you later. Right. How are you doing? Good evening. Malcolm Dobbs. Okay, you're on the list. Good evening, sir. How are you doing tonight? Captain Pat Chambers, who's the field supervisor? Tom Phillips. Tell him that the drug deal is going down in the penthouse at the Sprague building. Martin Sprague, Malcolm. Glad you could come. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, it's quite a spread you got here, Martin. You can Run a herd of cows through here, couldn't you? <laughs> Security tighter than a pair of press shorts. Bedrick Bordanti and Tallahassee Smith. What's your name? Smith. Smith. <laughs> May I offer you a drink? Well, if anybody knew how to make a gin ricky, you could. I do. Eve Warwick. Malcolm Dobbs. One gin ricky. Good evening, ma'am. 
Well, I guess you <laughs> certainly do have everything here, don't you? Keys, LDs, and Zs wholesale. Everything else, Keystone. Mm. Better than 90. It's quite pure. Well, it'll take a 175 melt point and go pure through a benzene burn. I'll take the key. Good fella. I'll take a nosy off of that. Oh, and keep play. How's that? I'll do just fine. How's that? That's even better. Well, best grade ether. A little goes a long way. Be done with your yard sale, Mr. Smith. You'd like to play some cards. Table stakes. Pot limit. 25,000 buy-in. Any time there's less than five in front of you, you can buy more chips. Draw for deal. No. I called over an hour ago. Where is he? I know you said Phillips is en route, but he's not here. Couple of dimes. 20,000 blind. I'm exuding confidence, Martin. 20. I think I'll exude some confidence of my own. You're 20? Up 20 more, put you all in. I'm exuding acute depression. Well, I'm glad I'm out of this mess. I mean, everybody's exuding something. Aces. Kings over trays, full. Huh? What? <laughs> Good evening. You are being robbed. Put your hands on the table and remain very, very still. There is no need to fear for your safety if you follow instructions. I will repeat what I just said. There is no need to fear for your safety if you follow instructions. Keep your hands on the table and remain very, very still. Hey, that ring's important to me. It's a good luck charm for an old friend. Give me that ring! Downstairs will not be killed if you stay exactly where you are for 30 minutes. I will repeat what I just said. The guards downstairs will not. Chambers? Yep. Who are you? Tom Phillips, Drug Enforcement Agency. Chambers called and wanted to meet me here. Who are you? Assistant DA Farrington. You're a little late. Chambers has heard bad. I'm going with it. Stick around. We've got a lot of questions we'd like to ask. So do we. Yeah. Linda? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Just 
Just hold on. Calm down. Where are you? I'll be right there. How is he? No, no, I don't know. What's the time? The bullet is dangerously close to the spinal cord. We have to operate immediately. He was shot in the back? Yeah. Without complications, he could be out of here in a couple of days. But if it hit the spinal cord, there could be total paralysis. Paralysis? Mike! How you doing, buddy? Let me watch my back. Just like a rookie. Mike. Take it easy now. Don't talk. Dope deal. High stakes poker game. Dope deal. Sprague building. I stopped by the Sprague building. I was crawling with cops, DA types, and feds all getting in each other's way, so I moved on. When somebody as big as Martin Sprague gets wiped out, the city doesn't sleep till it finds the reason why. I thought a certain country singer and I should have a polite chat. How was the poker game, Malcolm? Oh, Michael. Oh, I, uh... <laughs> I, I got some other ideas. I never did go. Never did go, huh? Mm. You're a hillbilly liar, Malcolm! Not hit the ground. You better start talking. You're gonna be right behind it. How much did you lose? A little over 50. What about Tallahassee? Ah. Trying to stop him? He got ticked off and took a big diamond ring off his finger. Ah. What about the guy that bought the cocaine? Or Dante? I don't know. He's some kind of an art dealer. That's all I know about. Him. You better not be lying, Malcolm. Because if you are, you're gonna have to nail that window shut. Here. Buy yourself a new hat. I hope you're looking for me. Unfortunately, I'm not. That's too bad. We'd make an interesting trio. Oh, really? I'll make a note. Pat made the doctors earn their fees. Six hours on the table, but they got the slug. The next three hours would make the difference. It was payback time, and a 45 caliber was the only currency I had. Angela, what are you doing here? I heard on the radio. I tried to get in and see Pat, and they won't let me in. Yeah, I know. He had a pretty rough night. Mike, I felt so bad. Hey. Don't worry about a thing. He's pretty thick skin. He's gonna be okay. It's just gonna be a matter of time, that's all. Assistant District Attorney Barrington. There were times he reminded me of a weasel every time I saw him. What's going on here? Whatever's going on is none of your business. Oh, tough talk. Don't press your luck, Hammer. Tom Phillips, Drug Enforcement Agency. Mike Hammer. What's the DEA got to do with this? An important citizen was murdered. Pat Chambers violated departmental procedures, and there are some unanswered questions. What procedure? What questions? Take it up with internal affairs. See how far you can get with them. Why did you call the DEA? Well, 
You remember the teller we had as a witness to Lancy Street bank robbery? Yeah, Angela Sereno. She was here just now. Well, I was uh, doing her a favor. A favor? Yeah, her, uh, her boyfriend's a dock worker. He was scooped up in a federal raid along with four or five others unloading a tub full of Colombian. Her boyfriend, Frank Dolce, overheard a jailhouse rumor that the feds missed a load of cocaine stashed in a secret place on the boat. A big piece of that cocaine was supposed to be sold off at the poker game. So Dolce has Angela go to you to make a deal with the DEA, right? Yeah. Well, what did you do that was so wrong? Nothing, except the NYPD lost a bust. But now the DA has a scapegoat. Pat's career is on the line. Angela Sorrento was working as a guide at the Statue of Liberty. Like most New Yorkers, I'd never been to visit the lady with the torch. To help her boyfriend, Frank Dolce, who was in jail, Angela had tipped Pat to a certain classy dope deal poker game, which almost finished off Pat the way it finished off Martin Sprague. Angela was a sweet kid. She'd made a few left turns when she should have turned right. But Pat and I tried to give her a hand whenever we could. Now she could repay the favor. Angela was the key to clearing Pat. <coughs> DA's office would be slow in working up much interest about Angela's murder. There would be no headlines, no forensics, no leads. The good lady took the tired, poor, and huddled masses, but in this case, she didn't give them back. Angela's boyfriend was a federal prisoner at the tombs, which meant I wasn't on his visiting list. I'd been flung back into the deep, cold well called Square One. Square Two was the Sprague penthouse. Poker. And cocaine. Well, that was right on both counts. Blow and dough. If only I'd gotten here 10 minutes earlier. Barrington deliver any witnesses? I'm only looking at the drug end, but I don't think so. You? Uh, Pat's only alibi turned up dead. And I still haven't been able to get to her boyfriend. That's because he's none of your business, Hammer. I talked to him. He's a punk. First time, way too far down the ladder to know anything about penthouse dope deals. And you can tell Captain Chambers that Frank Dolce denied using his girlfriend for anything. He also denied any knowledge of a robbery plan for the Sprague building. And of course you believed him. I think the possibility exists that Captain Chambers called DEA too late on purpose, yeah. Oh, stupid Barrington. Anybody ever tell you dumb is forever? Is that right? My people found this in a city car parked across the street. Captain Chambers' car, as a matter of fact. All right, Barrington. We all know you're never wrong. It's just that this time you're a little weak on being right. Frames like this went out with horn-rimmed glasses. There was enough bull in that room to father a herd. I really didn't expect any answers on the roof. Just some fresh air. How's it going? Already talked to the police. Said nothing then, nothing now. Hey, I'm not the man. Oh, one look tell me that. Smoke? Mm. 
I'm trying to quit, but today's not the day. Do you think it's World War II and I'm being liberated? Yeah. Take a hike, sir. I'm Mike Hammer. Leroy Applebaum, the third. You know, Leroy, I can't figure it out. I can't figure out how they got up here. I mean, there's alarms on every floor, motion detectors, infrared, security elevators. No place for a helicopter to set down. The cops lay that on you? <laughs> Ain't too smart, is they? I bet you're smarter. And them tracks there, see them? Yeah, for your platform, right? If a body with the right kind of know-how had two of these, he could slip him inside them tracks and climb right up the side of this building like a spider. You think that's how it was done? I know that's how it was done. Found about the roof door this morning. Got no other idea where it might have come from. Do you? Sometimes it's better to be lucky than smart. Leroy Applebaum III had given me a hot lead, but that particular climber's cam was one of 10,000 manufactured by an outfit in Hackensack, New Jersey. With that much leg work, there's no better legs than my secretary, Velda. Hello, Belda. Hello, Mike. I got the climber's cam traced to a retailer on the corner of 5th Avenue and 16th Street. Uh -huh. They bought 2,000 of the 10,000 cams that were produced. Yours was one of them. That's why you get the big bucks. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie. No pastrami today. <laughs> Sometimes you get pretty carried away when you find a parking place in New York. Pat was going to make it out of the hospital. Now I had to see to it that he stayed out of prison. My favorite parking ticket had had it. So you're into climbing. Oh. <laughs> All kinds. Yeah? Yeah. My name is Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator. This was sold right here in your store. I'm interested in finding out who bought it. Oh, well, that's kind of difficult, unless you have a good reason for me to dig through 10,000 sales receipts. Yeah, I got two. A friend of mine took a bullet in the back, and a nice young girl about your age is taking up space in the morgue. That's plenty good. I'll check it out. Thanks. Sandy, huh? Yeah. You're okay. Oh, <laughs> I'm a lot better than just okay. Yeah, you are. Next on my list was Beatrix Bordante, the guy who bought drugs and sold art. He had an address uptown, where even the garbage men wore designer jeans. I guess the pictures in that gallery were pretty good. I wouldn't know. The only thing I did know about those paintings They'd be good for covering up bullet holes in your wall.
Are you interested in imported art, good canvas, or frames? Up to now, my idea of imported art was German beer. I need Warwick. Mike Hammer. Well, you certainly have style, I'll say that for you. But then again, what kind of style shacks up with a guy who skips out on her and then leaves her holding the bag? You probably haven't been mistaken for Dale Carnegie all day. Doesn't it bother you just a little bit to be running this kind of scam on people? Oh, yes. But I take something for it. Well, what's that? Money. Huh. Listen, how about answering a couple of questions and maybe saving the life of an honest cop? I have no answers. Those heisters knew their way around that penthouse as if they lived there all their lives. Like one of the players could have tipped them off. Could have been you. Okay. If that's how you feel about it, don't expect any more cooperation from me. Honey, I never expect anything, and I still get disappointed. It's a shame. We were just beginning to warm up to each other. Hammer. You know where Tallahassee is staying? Why? Bordanti was playing with 40,000 of my money. I'd like to tag along. Sorry. Passengers don't help my gas mileage, or my disposition, for that matter. I understand. On the other hand, I have the address. You don't. so sure they were shooting at me. Their aim. You? No, thanks, honey. I think I'll just help myself. That's too bad. I think you're my chromosome type. I'll make a note. You could bring new meaning to the term private investigator. Well, it's a tough job. Somebody... Spare me that, please. Nitro Stark, 250 pounds of blood clot and scar tissue. He had a 72-inch chest and an IQ to match. What are you coming in here like the man from Glad for, Hammer? Eve, meet Nitro Stark. Living proof that man hasn't been out of the trees too long. I ain't had my workout today, Hammer. Go clog a drain. <laughs> I'm not so sure you had to get quite so physical. If you had a brain, I'd have thought him to death. Tell a Name's Mike Hammer. I got a couple questions for you. Why not? We got through the qualifying round. How are you, Eve? Fine. You carry half very well, Tallahassee. Very well indeed. Well, like they say, if you don't take care of your body, where are you gonna live? Somebody said that Captain Chambers is a friend of yours, Hammer. Right. Too bad. I haven't liked him from the last movie. You sound like a man who doesn't mind losing a lot of cash and drugs. I didn't say that. Some of those items were near and dear to me, particularly a ring I lost. My one good luck charm. Anyone like to join me for lunch? We got imported yogurt. Pina colada, cinnamon nuts. You got any tutti frutti? No. 
You know, if you were to tell me a little bit more about that robbery, I just might get your ring back for you. Hmm. Little Punk was strong. Had a grip like a wrench. What kind of weapons? Both had automatics. Any idea on how they knew where the game was? Someone fingered it. Well, Donnie was just here talking about that. He wants us to pool our resources and hire a PI we can trust. If you weren't so close to Chambers, we'd take your application under consideration. You think you can trust Bordante? No. Then he can't trust me, can he? By the way, what's all this to you? Nothing. Hey, Hammer. You don't mind if I have you followed, do you? Mm. Yes. Goodbye, Hammer. Well, thanks a lot. You got anything on Bardate? For one, he doesn't smoke. I'm cutting down. What else? He has no driver's license, no employment record, and no credit cards. Oh. But according to the tax assessor's office, he sold $5 million worth of art in New York City last year. Not bad for a guy who doesn't exist. Well, that checks out with what Eve Warwick said. Oh, how nice. I spent all day on this. What else does she have to say? Well, according to her, he's not an American. He's Bass. Lives in the West Indies. Probably where he met Tallahassee. OK, now we both know what Eve said. What does Mike Hammer say? Mike Hammer says that these belong to Bordante. Take a look at them. The prescription, expensive, very unusual design. I want you to check them out. OK. I'll get the gumball machine fixed. No, forget it. All these guys know how to fix today's electronic video games. I don't want them to ruin my gumball machine. What else is happening? Oh, your source at the court clerk's office called. The DA just came out of criminal court with an arrest warrant for Pat. An arrest warrant for Pat? Why didn't you tell me? I'll see you later. The case of what the hell is going on here? Mike, the DA asked my office to do the lab test. Test? What kind of test? On the cocaine found in Angelo Sorrento's apartment. Hey, please, please, do you mind? Wait a minute, we're trying to wait the door. One pound, 90% pure, an exact chemical match to the cocaine found in Captain Chambers' car, and the residue at the poker game. Now, you tell me, what is Captain Chambers' contact doing with cocaine from the heist? It's a paint job, and you know it. Criminal conduct involving a public official. Right now, the charge is illegal possession. I'm sure we'll be adding conspiracy, murder, and obstruction of justice as time goes on. So what are you going to do? You're going to arrest him right here in front of his whole family, in front of all the prey? Hey, Hammer, I don't like it. I've got a job to do, and I don't need your interference. Now I know why you're so thin, Barrington. You got no heart. Pat, I want you to think. Now listen. Yeah. I got to know everything. Is there anything more that Angela said that might shed light on the situation? You got it all, Mike. Everything I know. Listen, don't be busting any heads. Don't want to give Barrington the hives. Thanks, Mike. Bobby. Listen. Whatever you see, whatever you hear out there, it isn't true. Your dad is the best. Right? Right. Go get him, Tiger. wheels of the system were grinding up my best friend. I wasn't about to let my best friend get ground up. I called Velda. She said she had a female mountain climber in the office wanting to join the firm. If Sandy could hook a name on the guy who ordered the climbing device, I'd let her nail the bozo who was tailing me. But on the other hand, why should she have all the fun? Anything? Mike! Look, I was the one who took the order. His name is Davy Agate. He bought four cams, rope, backpacks, the whole enchilada. Was he alone? Well, Davy placed the order, but some other guy I'd never seen before picked it up. Where do we find this Davy Agate? In Hackensack. He works for the township teaching climbing and rescue. Great. Well, 
-hmm. Get Eve Warwick on the phone. Tell her Santa will be by in 20 minutes to pick her up. I want her to make a voice ID. Right. Come on, kid. You're on your first case. With you? You don't see anybody else, do you? Okay, her name's Eve Warwick. Pick her up and be back here in five minutes, okay? You have to make a secret contact first? Something like that, yeah. Must be losing it. Strictly for balance. That's him, Davey Agger, expert climber. The stairs are inside. I'll warm him up. I'm coming up, Davey. Okay. Climb one, ready. Private investigator up here. Who? Me, Davy. Got a couple questions for you. About this. It was picked up at the Sprague robbery and traced to you. Uh, what? Well, 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 they were gonna have me deported. Oh shoot. But that was too easy. I was really ready to grill them. See you at the bottom. Deported? To Scotland? I'm confused. I, I... I should talk to a lawyer. You should talk to a brain surgeon about a transplant. Deported to Scotland? She remembers your voice, laddie. Well, they promised no killing. I told them I wanted no part of killing. Who's they? Davy. With evidence this deep, you're in for a minimum of 30 years. Unless you plea bargain. <laughs> I'm out at that. I didn't hurt anybody. I'll be telling you the whole story when I get down. I'll meet you at the bottom. I just want to get my class off the side of the building. Watch out below, I'm coming down. Look out.
What about the license number? It was raining dead bodies with no let up in sight. But I didn't need an umbrella. I needed answers. How you doing, Mike? You want the same thing? Look, Sada Haro has 803 lifetime home runs to lead the world. Sorry, this gentleman is correct. Answer. Question. Who holds the record for the most games won as a relief pitcher? Hmm? You got me. Elroy Face. A record of 18 and 1 for the Pittsburgh Pirates, 1959. Answer, you amaze even me. Even myself. Question. Answer. Any news about hot ice from the spray robbery floating around town? Well, uh, word has it that the big fella from the south lost something that you might pick up at the diamond exchange down on Canal Street. Canal Street? Mm hmm You got all the answers, answer. I followed my nose and Ozzy the answer's tip down to Canal Street. Some days it smelled just like its name. A rather talkative fellow I knew helped me get it narrowed down. It didn't take me long to find what I was looking for. Now that I had Tallahassee's ring, his lucky ring, maybe it could bring me some luck. Maybe I could find out why Angela was so unlucky and why Pat's luck was running out. I checked back with Velda. Somebody had sprung Angela's boyfriend, Frank Dolce, from the slam. So much for the help he might have been. I told Velda to run down everything she could on the people arrested with Dolce when the boatload of dope was seized. I had an idea where to find Dolce, but I didn't want company. Nitro. <laughs> New York drivers could be dangerous. It was a good thing Nitro had his seatbelt on. <laughs> Angela Sereno had lived on the Lower East Side in a neighborhood where every day was D Day. It didn't have a daycare center. So the local kids played on the street. Don't even think about it. <laughs> See, you thought about it. This was a security building until the dog food ran out. Then all bets were off. You're detective agent. Bet you're working with Captain Chambers on that Angela murder case, huh? Well, it wouldn't have happened if she'd have had dogs like Spike. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right, baby? Oh. Yeah, you wouldn't let nothing happen to me, would you? No, I know that. Caught his first burglar last year. Chewed him up good. Word got out fast. Now, I bet you I got the safest building on the block. I believe it. Yeah, well, you ought to tell that to Captain Chambers. Then he wouldn't have to be giving away his money. Oh. Buy him a dog instead, that's what I say. Who was giving out money? 
Captain Chambers. He gave Erica $500. How do you know? Because I saw his personal check made out to her. She signed it over to me to pay the rent. Well, I can tell you something, we're getting nowhere fast. Come on, man, I didn't just get off the boat. I'm sick and tired of you lying to me. Mike, I don't know how much longer I can keep it together. Well, you might start by leveling with me. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. Angela was destitute. Her guy job was only three weeks old and her jerk boyfriend was in the slam. So you just helped her pay the rent, huh? Something you routinely do on your civil servant salary? Not what you think, Mike. Does Linda know about this? Oh, God. Why do you think I was such a clam in the hospital? Linda would never understand. Were you sleeping with her? I'm giving it to you straight, Mike. The 500 was to help Angela through a tough period. No strings, no favors, nothing. All right, all right. I believe you. But we can't afford any more surprises, Pat. I mean, Barrington has got that check. He's going to use it in court. I never slept with her. God, I wanted to, but, but I never did. I believe you. Listen, if I were you, I would tell Linda about that check. Listen, tell her what you did. Not what you thought. By the time I got to the hearing, Barrington had already worked over Eve. She thought she was going to help Pat by telling what happened at the climbing class. But Barrington had built a pyramid of circumstantial evidence that her testimony couldn't dent. He was on a roll. The only thing Barrington loved more than talking was listening to himself. But he sure didn't love listening to Pat's lawyer. And in the 15 years that you've known him, have you ever seen or heard of Captain Chambers doing anything that could be considered unlawful? No. Yep. And that's 18 years. Pat Chambers and I were in Vietnam together. He received the Distinguished Service Cross. Your witness. It's very effective, Mr. Hammer. Now, you don't remember that Captain Chambers was offered a bribe by one Patrick Donat, August 31, 1975. Well-known syndicate figure? Oh. Yeah, I remember. As I recall, Pat Chambers washed Mr. Donut's face and a plate of noodles Romanoff. Well, Captain Chambers had other offers, including one from Tallahassee Smith shortly after that. Six months later, he submitted papers for an early retirement. Are you aware of that? I was aware of that. Pat Chambers was going through what we commonly call a 10-year burnout. You want to explain that? I'd be happy to. See, the more effective you are in police work, the more arrests you make. After about a 10-year period, you begin to look at the hundreds of hardcore felons you put behind bars, and you suddenly see them loose in society because of some judicial technicality, whether it be inadmissible evidence or temporary insanity. And you see crimes, vicious crimes, punishable by death, reduced to six weeks for good behavior. You begin to wonder if it isn't the American justice system that has temporary insanity. We were talking about Captain Chambers, Mr. Hammer. You want to get off the soapbox? I remember Captain Chambers asking me, why should we risk our lives? If the DAs don't care and the judge doesn't care, why should we go out and get shot at? Is this a direct quote, Mr. Hammer? That's exactly what I said. Go on, Mr. Barrington. In any event, Captain Chambers chose not to retire. Why? Maybe because retirement wouldn't be as lucrative? No. He said somebody has to do the job. Somebody has to care. Look what it's got him. No more questions. Yeah, well, I've got one for you, Barrington. You just love prosecuting, don't you? You don't care that Pat Chambers is one of the best cops you ever had on the force. You're prosecuting an Eagle Scout. Out of order. I can hold you in contempt. Sorry, Your Honor. I plead temporary sanity. Pat was dealt from the bottom of the deck, and 
the stakes of the game were the highest he'd ever played. After careful deliberation, I've decided that there is sufficient prima facie evidence on the cocaine possession charge to bind the defendant over for trial in the general Supreme Court sessions. Bell will remain as posted. Trial date is set for October 3rd. Uh, yes. Well, there's been a cancellation on the docket. Your new trial date is therefore moved to September 2nd. Objection. That's only three weeks. Objection overruled. With three weeks and no new evidence, Pat Chambers was looking at a long stretch behind bars. Something had to be done, and I knew I had to do it. But what? Well, they bound him over for trial in three weeks. I just can't believe it. Barryman's doing everything he can to send him away. Mike, I tracked down those galleries. Bedrick or Dante. What about those mug photos on Frank Dolce and the others he was arrested with? The rest reports are federal. I couldn't even get close. All right, I'll get them from the NYPD. What about those prescription glasses? 75 gold inlay frames were made in that design. I have a list of optometrists who sold them in New York. Well, get on it. We've got to get to Bordante. Bordante is expected at one of the art galleries you told me to call. Well, why didn't you tell me? What are we playing? 20 questions? No, we're measuring your hostility index. Where's the gallery? It's on Park Avenue. I'll drive. Well, then what in the world would I do without you? This is it. Try and park around back. Oh, don't! Don't! Get back! Oh, get down! Get down! Oh, no, just, come on, come on, sir! Oh! together we could come up with something hmm, i'd like to put our minds together what's your name mike mine's bonnie mm, bonnie huh i'll make a note Angela was dead. Pat was coming to trial in three weeks. All I could do was look for someone called Bordante. I didn't know what he looked like, and in these surroundings, you couldn't tell a crook by his cover. Mr. Bordante, telephone. Telephone, Mr. Bordante. Give up smoking. Who's smoking?
Sandy. <laughs> I was afraid you'd already gone to sleep. I thought I'd fix you a real California-style mountain meal. Oh, yeah? Eat while gasping for breath, huh? <laughs> oh, I came by window because I saw that same car parked out in front. Oh, yeah? Am I being followed? Oh, are you being watched? Both. Well, I brought my sleeping bag, just in case you wanted the whole bed. Oh, yeah? I've got uh, dehydrated potatoes, dehydrated peaches, and my favorite, raw oysters. Dehydrated? No. It adds a little weight, but uh, they're worth it when you're not camping solo. Oh. Got any milk? Yeah, I think so. Wow! Half of this food is crawling, and the other half is teaching it's young. Well, I'm not home very much. We use water. Now, you just sit right down. It's going to be a gourmet's delight. All right, now, wait a minute now. Let's put our appetite aside just for a second and do some business, all right? Now, you sit down. I want you to take a look at these five guys. Now, these gentlemen were picked up offloading a boatload of Colombian red. Mm -hmm. You recognize any of them? Uh... Yeah, this one. Yeah, Garth. He's the guy that picked up the equipment from Davey, right? No. No? No. There was a third guy? Yeah. What's he look like? Is he here? No, ugly here is the only one I recognize. Well, you think you can remember that third guy well enough to sit down with a composite artist? Sure. Good. Oysters are also good for the memory. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? Mm. I didn't really bring my sleeping bag. You didn't? No. Hi. Hi. You haven't eaten yet, I thought. Too late. We were just starting with the hors d'oeuvres. Oysters. Well, I'll come back. When the oysters were off. No, 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 wait, wait. I got a few questions for you. Come right in. Eve, is it Sandy? Sandy, I'd like you to meet Eve. Oh, I forgot. You two already met. Got any glasses? I hate to pour champagne into tin cups. We don't care to alter our state of awareness. Especially when we are just about to enjoy ourselves. Go right ahead. And your questions can wait. No, 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 no. They, they cannot wait. And this is not the right place to ask it. Now, just... Uh... Sandy, listen. Uh... You can eat your oysters and go to bed, and you can sleep in my room. And I want to know exactly where you are, because tomorrow morning, you've got to get together with that sketch artist, okay? I've got a key, so uh, you can lock up behind me. Sleep tight. By myself? That's right, you did have some questions. You know, I'm not sure whether you're on the offense or the defense. You undercover types don't wear jerseys. You are slick. It all started with your confidence builder. First of all, bearded guys with Uzis don't miss when they get that close. And then there was that last minute phone call that Bordante got at the gallery. You were the only one that knew that I was coming. So what haven't you nailed down? All I know is you're a Fed. Which agency, I'm not sure. Department of Justice. Racketeering Task Force. What's the DOJ got to do with Bordante? I can't tell you. Thanks a lot. Look, Mike. What he's doing is important to us. Important? Meanwhile, he's, he's allowed to play poker with laundered cash, move with dope deals, and look on as people get murdered? Well, sometimes that's what it takes to work a sting. I see. Is that what you're doing with me? Working a sting? 
I'm trying to help you without endangering Bordani's cover. He had nothing to do with the robbery. I'm sure of it. I'd like to believe you. I'd like you to believe me, Mike. I want that very much. Think mountain climbers and oysters at the market corner. You know, I could get used to the secret agent thing. You're very special, Mike. You could become habit for me. No. Listen, I need a favor from you. Do you think you could get together with Sandy and arrange for your sketch artist to work up a composite with her? I thought you said she ID'd the man in the gray car. She did, but there was a third guy. The guy who picked up the climbing tools and paid for them. Now, he just might be the employer. What do you say? Done. Oh, you're easy. Mm-hmm. Tuesday night poker. Yeah, I know. I had a lot on my mind. Oh, I see. What'll it be? Nothing for me. What does the lady want? What the lady would like is a trip to Hawaii with you. Really? What about two trips to Hawaii? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So how long do you think that'll last? Till the next murder? No. It would last as long as we wanted it to. As long as we keep creating wonderful memories. Should I quit my job for memories? Fantasy. Like last night? Like every night. You got an answer for everything. Question. Answer. Did Manny Mona have more pinch hits of Rusty Style? A pleasure, young lady. Yes, he did. Right again, Hammer. I made me feel very smart. Eve, this is Ozzy the Answer. He makes love to the World Book of Records. Among other things. I know, Ozzy. <sighs> going, going, gone. Young lady, my pleasure. All right, Hammer. Excuse me. Uh, walk over here for me, would you? I found out y'all were getting close to his big ring and, uh, you know, his precious ring. He'd been laying a little low, and uh, I got some heat on me because he sent me to get it. And I don't know, I mean, what, you know, knock on. I have the ring. Huh? You found it? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. All right. I'm saved, aren't I? I wouldn't count on that. Well, well, I mean, what am I supposed to do? Sweat.
I knew Malcolm would let Tallahassee know I had his ring, so it was time to pay the big guy a visit. None of the poker players were putting their cards on the table, except maybe Sprague, who dropped out of the game early, dead. This case was beginning to have more twists than a Rubik's Cube. I even had a funny feeling I wasn't being followed. Who is it? Hammer. Come back later, Hammer. I got something you've really been looking for. Shove it under the door. Your gratitude is overwhelming. You're a bit shy on manners, Hammer. I'll make a note. You thought this would go a few rounds, huh? Whatever it takes. I don't have the time, Hammer. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Medical examiner estimates her time of death between 10 and 12 hours before you call, Hammer. That means she died around noon yesterday. She died for a reason, Barrington, and Pat Chambers is not it. Then what is the reason? I'm not sure, but Miss Warwick here had the Department of Justice technician make a copy of the identikit composite. We may learn something when we pick it up at her office. And if you were to let up on Pat Chambers, maybe you'd have a little more time to find out who the real killer is. Look, Hammer, I don't like going after Chambers. It's not fun for me. He was a fine cop for a long time, but like I keep telling you, read my lips. I've got a job to do, and I don't need your advice on how to do it. Right, Barrington. We all know you don't need anybody, as long as you keep the ball on the ground. Because you drop back for a pass, we might have to scrape you off the other team's goalpost. Mike, wait. Look, I'm limited by agency jurisdiction, but I'll do what I can to help. How come the Drug Enforcement Agency is so benevolent all of a sudden? Not the agency, me. I retire myself next month after 20 years. I got a real good idea what's going on in Pat's gut. Really? Maybe you're not on Barrington's team. But what can limited jurisdiction do for Pat? Garth was, as you said, a federal prisoner in that boat case. Dope was involved in the robbery. Because of that, I can justify sending my people out to look for him. 
That's a step. What about those reports on the boat case? Can I see them? I'd like to tie all those suspects together. Uh, that's going to be rough. Federal reports are confidential, but I'll do my best. Cocaine is a business dealing in hundreds of millions. Well, 100 million here, 100 million there. Pretty soon we're talking about real money. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Put a muzzle on Barrington. I couldn't get the picture of Sandy Freeman dead out of my mind. If I hadn't gone to her for help, she'd still be alive. And Sandy did help. She left one copy of an identical composite behind in Eve's office. And I was convinced it was the face that would get Pat off the hook. Oh, no. Is there another copy? No, I only had the guy make one. All right, that's it. I got to see Bordante. I told you, he has nothing that can help. I know, he's been under constant surveillance. Surveillance, yeah, while well, he plays poker, deals with dope. We know what we're doing, Mike. Yeah, so does Bordante. The guy's getting rich and he's got federal protection. Is there a better way to get to the top? To stop the ones who pull all the strings? It's neat. I have got to talk to Bardante. He's the only thing I got left. Now, where is he? You're asking me to make a tough choice. You or my job. Well, that's not a choice at all. I'm sorry. So am I. hostility in that shot. I always think about Barrington when I break. You know that. Mike, you should be on the streets looking for Bodante. What, are you kidding me? Listen, Pat, you can't go anywhere near that thing and you know it. Come on, it's your shot. <laughs> hey, not bad. I hate to interrupt, but I have a surprise. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, First, I'd like to talk about my forthcoming race. Must be some surprise. A breakthrough discovery is all. Yeah, well, we'll talk about the race once we find out about the breakthrough. Come on. Okay. For Dante's reading glasses, the ones that you picked up at the gallery, yeah. they were prescribed two years ago, but not under the name of Bedrick Bordante. That particular frame and prescription were sold to Arturo Velasquez. Velasquez? We busted him two years ago for insurance fraud and racketeering. He doesn't look anything like Bordante. Are you sure? If the feds gave Velasquez a new identity, they may have given him a new face. Look at this, the facial structure is similar. Mm -hmm. She could be right. Yeah, but the last time I heard, Velasquez was in the Bahamas. What's he doing wandering around Manhattan? Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Pat. Who was Velasquez's main connection a couple of years ago? Well, it was never proven, but we all knew it. He was the feds' number one prize. Uh-huh. Walter Donnelly. The only thing Danelli and I had in common was things were going bad for both of us. Velasquez, or Bordante as he was now known, was singing like a bird, giving the Danelli grand jury information, right or wrong. I needed information too, but I knew I couldn't handle five guys at once. I also knew who could. Nelly would have ordered this in the courthouse. It's not to Nelly. Now, Velasquez, it's just you and me. All right, take it easy. Take it easy. Uh, who figured the spray game? What, are you crazy? Who? What are you talking about? I'm a stand-up citizen. I ain't no rat. You can answer the question. Oh. You can twist all you want, tough guy. Tough guy. Oh, come on. You can twist all you want and break it, but I want to tell you something. 
When it's all over, we're talking about the big D for you, Chef. Get, get away from my face! Do something! Hammer! Let him up! This man's a federal witness. Yeah, he's a federal fraud. Uh, Arturo Velasquez. He's still working for the syndicate. You think he's going to help you convict Danelli? Uh, you tipped the poker game in the penthouse, didn't you? No! Didn't you? No! I'm not my oldest holy, no! Hammer! You don't need arms to talk. I didn't finish the game! I swear, I swear, I swear. Tallahassee? No, 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 no. Was this cocaine? Who was it then? Who was it? Ah! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Talk to Malcolm Dobbs. Malcolm Dobbs. He badgered me to get into the game. He didn't know where it was until I got him the invite. Go break his arms! I'll do just that. Ah! Ah! We got a real winner here. You're under arrest, Hammer. Tampering with a federal witness, assault, kidnap, obstruction of justice. Yeah, well, I got what I came for. Yeah, well, you paid a damn heavy price for it. Now, I'll tell you who pays a heavy price. The people pay a heavy price to keep dirtbags like this in style. Well, you make your boneheaded trade-offs. Well, I got another trade for you. Either I walk, or I go public with everything I know about you and what you let your witness get away with here under the guise of federal immunity. You call it, Mr. Prosecutor. So long again How many times will I keep on Believing this never will end So you say so long Good luck and goodbye again So long Get out of my life again Please help me, Jesus I'm losing my mind When you say so Malcolm's on stage But I just bet you're my kind of entertainment You got a key to his dressing room? Well, it's never locked Unless someone's already inside first I'm a contortionist Do you ever contort? Only on Fridays. It's Friday. Follow me. Start a new life with a nice little girl with a heart of her own. So you say so long. Each his own. So I prefer a natural high. Time after time Please help me, Jesus I'm losing my mind When you say so long So long again Thank you! Thank you! God bless you! Back, Malcolm. Oh, I noticed. Naughty, naughty, Malcolm. If you're planning an encore, you're going to have to come it because I'm going to have to chastise you. You. Uh, you set me up. You heard about the game. The night you came over to my office, you didn't want any protection. That was just establishing an alibi for you. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah? Somebody wanted to know the location on Bordante. That same somebody took the game down. Now, who was it? I've been squeezed. Don't you understand that? I want a name, Malcolm. Am I going to get that protection? Or what's going to happen to me? I want to leave! All right. Malcolm Dow. Let me finish this up.
things right, Mike. It's not much. But it's all I could think of. Federal reports on Frank Dolce you wanted to look at. Why? Why now? Sometimes it takes a storm to clear things up. You're very hazardous to me. And my job. I uh, I'm gonna need some help reading this. Hey. I'm a pushover once you get to know me. We wouldn't have to worry about the secret agent part. I'm gonna get fired for taking those reports. My longevity usually lasts around an hour and a half. Don't freeze. Wait a minute. Garth was released from jail one month before Angela's boyfriend, Frank Dolce, right? Right. romantic vacation on that, or would we? Not that cheap. No. According to this, U.S. Customs has it on the seized vessel block tomorrow. Let me see that again. I was just kidding. Oh, I remember that Pat said that there was a load of dope that was missing. Missing from a secret compartment. What? Here's another report. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the bidding today with a 50-foot Alden catch, surveyed at a wholesale market value of $65,000. Federal law requires the bidding begin at wholesale. Who will start the bidding? 65,000. I have 65. Do I hear 70? 70. Do I hear 70? Yo. 70. Do I hear 75? 75. Do I hear 75? 75. 75. Yes, ma'am. I have 75. 80. Do I hear 80? I have 75. 80. Do I hear 85? I have 80. Do I hear 85? 85. 90. $90,000, ladies and gentlemen. Do I hear more? 95. 95. $95,000. Yes, sir. Do I hear 100? You got it. I have your bid, sir. $100,000. Great retirement vote, eh, Tom? Yeah, but you're pushing it off the market, Mike. Didn't know you were a sailor. Well, I thought I'd make a good investment. Not at that price. What are you doing here? Your bid was $100,000, sir. I'd take it all the way to a million. Of course, it'd be worth it, wouldn't it, Tom? 
It seems we will have to start the bidding once again. I believe the last Your boy's missed Tallahassee's cocaine stash. Then Garth heard he was going to turn it in a high-stakes poker game, tried to make a deal with you to stay out of jail. He even bragged about it to Angela's boyfriend, who also tried to make a deal, but he didn't know how. How am I doing so far, Tom? I think you're crazy, Hammer. Yeah. What you never figured on was Angela Sorrento talking to Pat before you shot him in the back. You were going to retire. I mean, a cool million would be a lot better than a reduced prison sentence. You squeezed Malcolm Dobbs for holding a little snow so you could get the exact location in the Sprague building. Then you came up with a very fancy way of getting a cool million out of the country. And here we are. Away from me, Hammer. Just stay away. Let go over, Phillips. I've waited too long. Saw too many punks get rich. Money always talked. Nobody did time, nobody cared. Phillips, let go over! When I'm clear! sound and I'll blow your spine through your belly.
I got my pain. I'll live with it. How's your pain? I'll live with it. Dinner my house Friday night, mandatory. You got it. It was there, all right. Eve and I had had it. That magic or chemistry or call it what you want when two people click. It was there, and it could have been something special. But in a flash, it was gone, and her with it. The blues had me by the throat, and it was lonely. Can I get you anything, Mike? Oh, no, thanks, darling. I'm just fine. Well, you've always got me. That ain't all bad. <laughs> Thank God for Velda. Thank God for the city. It was time to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> 